In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us now prepare ourselves properly to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint knowing that I shall not be put to shame. 
He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith, I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and rise after three days. He spoke openly about this. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this, he turned around and, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny him his very self. Take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. As Catholics, when we come together to celebrate Mass, as well as those who may not be of the Catholic uh, tradition, uh, but join us, we associate coming to Mass with the altar and the cross. Those two things always go together. It's actually church teaching that at the sacrifice of the altar, there must always be a crucifix hung. And that cross that always stands above the altar is to serve as a symbol to draw our mind, our heart, our soul, our spiritual attention to that one moment, that one saving act of the Son of God that brought us the gift of eternal life and of salvation, to heal us from our human nature uh, that is uh, bound to the penalty of sin, which is death, but brings us that hope that beyond this life there is eternal life that is given to us by God's gift through his son's sacrifice on the cross. And whether it is gathering together as a community of faith or when we come personally or with a, a small group of people to come and pray in a church and we gaze upon the cross, we are so accustomed to thinking about the cross Jesus asks us to follow. My cross. A cross that is challenging, that a cross that demands obedience, a cross that demands sacrifice uh, for the love of others. Uh, but we must not allow our focus when we pray individually to blind ourselves to the awareness, and the realization that we all are carrying crosses and that as we gather as a community of faith under the one cross of Christ, we are united in the name of the Lord. We are united as the body of Christ and each of us is carrying a cross and we must realize we don't carry it alone. That's why it's so rewarding for families, for friends, for a community to come together 
to realize that what we are doing as church is growing in our capacity and our realization that we are all disciples following what Jesus in today's gospel taught Peter and those first disciples. That if you want to follow me, you must take up the cross and carry it. And so as we come to the altar of the Lord, as people of faith, each and every week, we bring to God our efforts to be faithful and place them at the foot of the cross upon this altar. St. James, in the second reading today, speaks of the realization that to be people of faith requires to be people of good works. And that James couples those two ideas. And unfortunately, for people who are not Catholic, they often associate Catholics with a misunderstanding of that on that, that part of James's teaching, that as Christians we believe that we are saved by faith, by faith in Jesus Christ, and because we believe that we are saved, the works that we do as Catholics aren't works that are trying to earn our salvation, working for our personal uh, attainment of heaven, for we, like all Christians, believe that that was gained by one sacrifice, the sacrifice of Christ. But rather, St. James is talking about a different kind of work. Work for building the kingdom of God. Work of doing those acts of mercy that Jesus taught us as his family. Works of charity works of mercy, visiting the sick, the elderly, those who are vulnerable, opening our hearts to help feed the hungry, give shelter to those who lack it. That is the work of the disciples of Jesus. That is the work of the church. We call it ministry. Ministry because it is done by disciples. And so as we return to that idea that James gives us about faith and good works, we must never make the mistake in misinterpreting that, that James is calling people to work prayerfully and spiritually for our salvation, and that's the only way we earn it. But rather, the opposite is true. Because we have the love of Christ in our heart and we keep that love fresh by the power of the Spirit, it is our natural response to when we encounter people with need, people who come to us who lack love, who lack the support they so desperately need, that in the name of Jesus we respond graciously in ministry by expressing mercy and kindness. Our parish family of Our Lady of Grace in so many ways is organized and structured to help facilitate our parish membership to, un to embrace ministry. So many of our organizations are directed in a unique and special way to carry out the work of the church, the work as disciples. And you and I realize that uh, one of our common concerns is passing on our faith, our love of Jesus to uh, our next generation and the generations to come in our children and adolescents. Uh, we not only have a, a concern for that, but we are blessed that there are members of our parish community who believe that their cross, their discipleship, is to take up that work, to take up that ministry, to prepare, to gather, and to share the message, the story of our Catholic tradition, the story of the scriptures as we interpret them as a community of faith. We call those in that ministry catechists. It's a church word, just like 
ministry is. But we must use those types of words to distinguish ourselves from the culture, the idea in society that tries to minimize or diminish the importance of God and faith. And so as we have come together today, last week was a very powerful weekend for our church community. We uh, started anew, a fresh uh, year of ministering to our children, our adolescents, and time to come in our adults. Uh, And I can't do that alone. I rely on staff and other people who are called into that ministry. And so as we bring humbly to a close and reflection on God's word today, uh, I ask you to join me in acknowledging and extending a prayer of blessing upon those members of our parish who are here and some uh, who couldn't make it to this mass that we extend a prayer of blessing upon them and want to acknowledge them and express our gratitude that God will make fruitful their work throughout this coming year. And so, uh, catechists, I see Kelly, and uh, would you like to please stand? Okay. I know this is not a, it's not a Catholic thing to do. Okay. So join me in prayer. Lord God, source of all wisdom and knowledge, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to live among us and to proclaim his message of faith, hope, and love to all. In your goodness, bless these, our brothers and sisters, who have offered themselves in the ministry of catechist for our parish and your church. We ask that you strengthen them with your gifts of the Spirit, that they may teach by word and example the truth and the love that comes from you alone through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith. begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, gathering as a people of faith today, embracing the crosses that you challenge us to carry as followers of your Son, we bring these needs to you and ask that you graciously hear these prayers. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For church leaders, may they continue to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit as they guide and lead their flock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all civic leaders, may they be encouraged by the gospel in their work of ensuring that all peoples can worship God 
in peace and freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who live in fear of violence or the terror of war, may they be given God's grace and protection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all who suffer, may God's Holy Spirit restore them to the fullness of life and health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country and those who defend it, and all who put themselves in harm's way to rescue those in need. May God keep them safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our catechists and volunteers who work within our children's ministry at Our Lady of Grace, we pray for God's wisdom and the Holy Spirit to fill their hearts and minds as they instill the faith of our church to our children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of our faithful departed, including Jamie Lynn Cordial Hall, may they rest in peace of Christ our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we bring our prayers to you this day with a trusting faith that you will turn our hearts and minds to the fullness of your love and truth. Grant us the spirit of courage and strength to live according to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we present our gifts, please join in singing hymn number 375, The Summons.
Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
must be bred, passed by the Lord, broken and shed, life for the world. Let us be one, love freely poured. Let us be one in the
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so very much for joining our parish family and celebrating our faith and embracing the work of ministry in so many ways in our parish, in our community, and in our schools. Uh, may you truly be blessed throughout this coming week. And may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, number 333, Blessed Be the Lord. Come to me, no arrow strike me down.